You can turn your King James Bible to Luke chapter 3. Preacher boys become Satan's toys. Little unique uh, sermon title here. Uh, you say, what are you talking about? Well, for many years I saw things of uh, preacher boys, you know, these young men and they're called to preach. They just know that they're called to preach. And they're in their teens and they're getting out of high school and, you know, they've born and raised in the church and ever since they were little, they're, you know, baby, they're baptized and, and things. And then they go in through the whole thing. They grow up there in Sunday school and then they get into the youth group and then they go the whole way through, get out of high school, go to the many times the, you know, church's actual school. And then it's, okay, my pastor said I should go to Bob Jones University, and so I'm going to go to Bob Jones University or Tennessee Temple or some other place, and I'm going to get my official, you know, um, whatever degree, whatever you'd want to make it, uh, that these guys will come through, you know, bachelor's or master's or, you know, PhD or something like that, which is kind of weird why a Bible college would give out doctors of philosophy degrees, but... Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, but we won't get into that. But these guys will go through the whole thing. And in little they're just kind of like a little incubator. You know, they're not born out there in the hen house with the, you know, and out there as a little pee, pee walking around, you know, a little chick walking around and the hawks are flying over and they have to run quick and hide and they see one of their brothers or sisters getting, you know, no, they're just in this little lab grown, little warm lights on them and they just kind of grow up in this sterile little environment of church buildingism and they don't ever do anything wrong and they're just so holy and pure and great and wonderful and they, they don't know how to do anything but preach or teach and they've gone to little Bible college and they're just so, you know, you know, and you get these guys, I've seen these preachers and they have, they have women's hands, you know, I mean, their hands aren't all gnarly and all beat up and, you know, scarred and everything else like a guy that actually worked, you know, most of his life and still works, you know, very hard. And uh, they don't know anything about that stuff. And there's a danger there. That's what this study is about. And you see a lot of the preacher boys that um, were there, part of the Hiles, uh, Hiles Anderson College preacher boys that I've known of over the years. And they come out and they get into their church buildings. And next thing you know, there's perversion problems and oh the guy's molesting children and oh he's a sodomite now actually and he's this and he's you know I mean I've known Baptist preachers uh, cover up all kinds of sin and you know they'll get into all kinds of wicked stuff knew a, a king a guy that was a friend of the ministry years ago and he was going to a King James Bible believing Baptist church you know the guy knew Peter Ruckman and the whole deal and you know hardcore hard preaching and the guy the pastor that was this hardcore Bible believing preacher was molesting this other brother's twin eight year old girls. And when the guy went to go to the police about it and the authorities, the people of the church got mad at him. They said, we should have settled this thing within, you know, among ourselves. <laughs> huh? The guy's a pedophile. But what's the problem? Well, he was a preacher boy. Mm-hmm. Raised in church. Squeaky clean. Luke chapter 3, verse 21. Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. Like a dove. It wasn't that he is a dove. Um, and a voice came from heaven, which said, Thou art my beloved Son, and in, in thee I am well pleased. And Jesus himself began to be about thirty years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. And then it goes down through there. Um, but Jesus was thirty years old when he started his ministry. Now, I've said this thing for years and years. Problem number one with preacher boys. If they're under thirty years of age, they don't, they don't usually work out. Why? Well, because you haven't experienced enough of life. Preachers should be older men. They should have gray hair. Uh, and it increases over time. Um, preachers should not be young men. I know Bob Jones Sr. came out and, you know, he was, a, he was preaching revivals when he was 13 years old. No, no, I don't know. And, you know, I just need to tell you today that the Word of God, oh, oh look at the time. I'm sorry. I, I want to cut this revival short. I need to get home and get to bed so I can get up for school tomorrow. No. Preachers should be older men. If Jesus waited till he was 30, why should a normal man 
preach when he's in his 20s or especially when he's in, in his teens. And I've seen these young guys, they get all full of themselves and everything else. Uh, new one and oh, he's just going to be a preacher and everything else. Went off to some Baptist church and he got his preaching and everything and just fell apart. You know, came the whole way here to Northern Maine to interview me the one time. Uh, flew on an airplane to come up here, did a video. Joshua Alvarez is who I'm talking about, the guy's name was. He got so messed up, you know. You need to get out there and you actually have to have a job and work and get your hands cut and dirty and whatever else and things. Get some skills there. And then wait till you're 30 and then you might be ready to preach. Mark chapter 6. Well, I just love the Lord and I love His Word and I just want to preach His Word. You're not ready. You're not ready if you're in your 20s. You are not ready to go into a full-time ministry. I'm telling you right now. You need to have other skills. Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples follow him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? They're hearing his wisdom. They're seeing the miracles that Jesus is doing. He's God manifest in the flesh. But look what they say. Is not this the carpenter, the son of, of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon, and, and are not his sisters here with us? Mary had lots of children. And they were offended at him. They didn't say, oh, yeah, he was raised around the temple and he just, you know, went to Bible, Baptist Bible College, I think it was. Yeah, he got his Ph.D. there and, and um, went out door to door and bus ministry and he worked his way through the all the Baptist levels of succession till he was ordained. And then he's been preaching, filling in for the pastor and he's been a faithful preacher boy. And now, he, no, he's a carpenter. He? He's a carpenter. Not, oh, he's the, the son of the carpenter. You see that as well. But Jesus himself was a carpenter. Now, you think about that one for a minute. God manifests in the flesh and he spends 30 years, and he's old enough to start, you know, we'll say 20 years. We'll just say he started working when he was 10. 20 years of his life. Maybe we'll say, you know, a little bit younger than that or whatever, but still 20, maybe 20 plus years of his life working a blue collar type of job. Huh? God manifest in the flesh? Why did he do that? You remember when he was there and he stayed behind, Luke chapter 2, and he's there and he's behind and his mother and Joseph come back and they're looking for him and they find him in the, in the temple asking questions. And the doctors of the law are astonished at his you know, understanding of the scriptures. And Wow. He could have gone into ministry right then. The child wonder, Jesus Christ, and he's, here he is. He's you know, just a few years old seven, eight year old boy and he's out there and he's leading the Sanhedrin and this and he's that and he, was he able to? Yes. Then why did he waste, you know, 20 plus years of his life being a carpenter? Wouldn't that be pointless? Think about that. Well, hey, you know, there's not much time on earth and whatever else. Yeah, he was living until he was 33 and a half and then he's going, you know, dying on the cross and going up back up to heaven. Only 33 and a half years, and he spends over half of that time doing carpentry. You know why? Because it builds character. And the Lord's trying to show us something. Verse 4, But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went round about the villages teaching. But he still was a carpenter. Knew how to do something else besides preach. Acts chapter 18. You see, brethren, that's the real issue here. It's a very dangerous thing for a man to just only preach. 
That's all I know how to do. I've never done anything else. I was raised in church, and I was taught in church, and I went to Bible college, and I got out of Bible college, and I've been preaching and teaching and just there serving the Lord all the time. Okay, um, what happens if some things change in our country? And now all of a sudden, there is no more YouTube. There's no more website. King James Video Ministries is gone. There is no more website. You have to facially retinal scan and all this other stuff, facial recognition and everything else to get online. You need an internet ID and you need to have it on your cell phone and all this other passport stuff. And What if that happens? I'm not going to be part of it. Well, then what are you going to do for a living, Brian? Oh, I don't know. I could do logging. I could do wood turning. I could do firewood sales. I could probably become a hunting and fishing guide. Um, I could make wood carvings. I could do small engine repair. I'm a certified motorcycle repair technician. You say, no, you're not. I never heard that. Okay, let me just show you here. Here's my diploma. Right there. Motorcycle repair. I have a diploma. See, all you people out there, you didn't think I was educated. I'm educated. <laughs> uh, that was my my dream okay there we go my dream was to be a a uh, motorcycle mechanic I love to work on motorcycles I love to work on cars and things but I just never have time to really study it and really do really good at it but uh, there's a lot of skills that I have a lot of things I studied over the years and um, I didn't start this ministry until after I was 30 Can't imagine what it'd be like to uh, be one of these little preacher boy pansies that I've met over the years in person, and um, there's just no relatability. They're just so perfect. They've just never done anything bad or anything at all, and whatever. And okay, I'm not saying you have to be wicked and whatever. I, you know, please understand what I'm saying, but it's hard to take a guy like that seriously. Acts chapter 18, verses 1 through 3. Did Paul do anything besides preach? After these, these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy and with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers." Tent makers? Paul was making tents. There were people dying and going to hell. Didn't he understand that? It's all about preaching the gospel. What was Paul doing? Wasting his time making tents. Because it'll help to keep you sane. That's why. Um, if all you ever do, it's if all you ever do, I'm getting ahead of myself here, if all you ever do is just hang around the religious stuff and whatever else, you'll start to lose your mind. God didn't intend for you to just be constantly in the Bible and preaching the gospel and just all that all the time. I mean, what did the Lord do? Did he ever do anything as far as going to the Garden of Gethsemane or going out on the fishing boat with his disciples? Yes. Again, why did he spend the first 30 years of his life being a carpenter? Working with your hands is something that's good. So you young guys out there, it's good that you study the Bible. That's great. I'm not trying to discourage you. But find something to do with your hands. Be a mechanic. Work with wood. Work with metal. Become a blacksmith, in other words. Um, do, you know, a casting of iron. Uh, a million different things that you can do. All hand skills. You have to get into that stuff. Don't end up as some little satanic toy preacher boy. Acts chapter 22. You say, well, you know, Paul is just like Jesus. No, actually he wasn't. Acts chapter 22, verse 3. I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day. So the apostle Paul was brought up as a preacher boy, but that didn't stop him from going out and getting a secular occupation. And knowing how to do things. 
So you have no excuse. It's very important to do these things. You know, and I mean, uh, when is the last time that I've ever said in a video, I just don't know what to do. I'm just so bored. I don't, I don't know what to do with my life. Uh, I am not bored. All right. I have vehicle repairs I need to do. I have construction work I need to do. I have, oh man, I mean, it, it makes me go half crazy sometimes when I think of the big to-do list that I have. And there's always stuff being added to it. Uh, my life is not boring. Okay, but if I'm just sitting around watching YouTube videos and whatever else and just going to read the Bible and whatever else, uh, that could get boring after a while. And please understand what I'm saying there. God's Word is beautiful and exciting and witnessing to people is a wonderful thing. But uh, God intended you to work with your hands, brethren. You have to do that. 1 Timothy chapter 3. First Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless. Do you get that as a teenager? How long have you proved yourself to be blameless? No. The husband of one wife. As a teenager? Eh. Vigilant, sober, of good behavior. Given to hospitality, apt to teach. Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? A man's supposed to know how to do some things. Of good behavior, good report of them which are without. You don't get that just from being a little uh, smooth-faced preacher. I'm a preacher boy. You don't get that from that. You have to have some skills. You have to have some knowledge. I remember uh, J. Frank Norris, the, one of the big Baptist preachers of the early 20th century, and uh, had his issues, of course, but uh, they said that that guy, he was raised on a farm. And um, very interesting childhood, if you've never heard about it. Father was a drunk. His mother was a Bible believer and very strong farm woman. And uh, some of the stuff he went through and whatever, pretty interesting stories. But... The point is, they said J. Frank Norris could strike up a conversation with pretty much anybody. He was an expert on almost any subject because he'd done so much with his life. That's a good kind of a preacher to have around. And uh, just to tell you, you know, as you say, he's a little nothing bad ever happened to him. His dad got so drunk the one time he almost killed him because J. Frank Norris actually had poured out his dad's liquor. His dad had a problem with farm, with a, he was a farmer, but he had a problem with alcohol. And when he came home and he found out that his son poured out his alcohol, he beat him, almost killed him. And uh, he was kneeling down beside his, his bed, basically there where his son was all bandaged up. After he sobered up, he came back in and he got down on his knees and he said, Son, he said, you fight alcohol. You do what you can to stop alcohol. Please, you do that. You remember what I did here and I'm sorry. But you grow up and you be a preacher against alcohol. And boy was he ever. Um, great preachers, uh, they, they had pasts, they had experience in things. Lester Roloff, another one of the, the pastors I've, you know, um, definitely respected, and he talked about milking his way through college. He was a country boy, and he actually took his milk cow to college with him, and he'd have her out there grazing in the yard and whatever else, and then he'd go milk her in the morning and the evening and sell the milk, you know, raw milk to people, and, and uh, paid his way through college, Bible college that way. <laughs> character you see the guy was a pilot he could fly airplanes he had character but you get these guys raised in these churches well, i've never done anything but preach they start to compromise after a while well i could lose my job i could lose my church building if i don't say certain things and you know huh. well what i do without my church that's why those places become social clubs where the pastor's afraid to offend anybody because he doesn't know how to do anything else. It's a problem. Verse 6, not a novice. What's a novice? It'd be somebody who's young, doesn't have much experience. I mean, you get some guy in his late teens or something and he's been 
working with his dad on motorcycles or something since he was a little boy. Well, he's not really a novice, per se. He might be young and still somewhat foolish in his mind, but it takes years of experience. See, even if some guy, this little boy says, I started working on dirt bikes when I was 8 years old. I'm 18 years old now. Well, that's still just 10 years. Give it another 10. See, he would be 28. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall under the condemnation of the devil. That's what happens to these preacher boys. They get out there, and boy, they start to get that man worship going, and oh, we just want to thank the Lord for Dr. So-and-so came here, and oh, pastor, he's one of the greatest pastors ever, and these guys start to, oh, yeah. and you know, I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and oh, look at me, and prideful. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Happens all the time with these preacher boys. They turn out to be used by Satan. If you're a young man out there and you're looking to serve the Lord with your life, serve the Lord on the work site. Oh, I have to find a Christian construction company or something. Well, probably that won't happen. Um, I have to find a Christian job that I can go to where nobody tells dirty jokes or whatever. No, you have to go through that. I did. You have to go to some place where people are smoking on lunch break and you're out there and you're trying to get some fresh air and they're standing there talking to you with their cigarette and whatever else and you're saying, Lord, I'd really like to see this guy or this girl get saved and just give me an opportunity to witness to them and you try to witness to them and you... you you go through all that stuff. Oh, we, I got close that time. I, they were getting close, but then somebody else came walking over and started a conversation and boom, snapped them out of it. And you know, you'll go through that stuff. You go through the thing of your, you know, uh, I was using a plasma cutter the one time at the one factory I worked at and one of the sparks went up and went right up my nose. <laughs> uh, hot molten metal essentially up my nose. Yeah, that's a pleasant feeling. Um, unloading a big thing of windows the one time for big boats that we used to build and the whole there was a screw that was sticking out of this where the boats or the windows were screwed together this kind of a wooden frame and I didn't see it and the guy kind of it slipped out of his hand and it hit me right here that big screw sticking out and just went right down like that missed the tenons and everything and the veins there but sliced me just down in like that blood all over the place and everything else character it's character I don't know how many times I've been in logging accidents, had, you know, one time uh, had my hard hat off and a big limb came down, hit me on top of the head and just drove me right down into the ground. I was knocked out for I don't know how long. Build character. Well, no, I don't think I want that. I think my calling is to be a preacher and I'm just going to... I'm just going to go to Bible college as soon as I get out of school and I'm going to go off and I'm going to get a good church and I'm going to be active there and then I'll take over as a senior pastor when I'm 22 years old. Then you're going to become used of the devil. So, I'd recommend that you uh, be real careful of that stuff. Um, enough said. Um, if you're going to listen, then great, praise the Lord. If you're not going to listen, you're just convinced you're just going to be a preacher and whatever else, well, what can I say? <coughs> Excuse me. So that is going to be it for this study, and uh, we will see you in the next one. And um, please do pray about it. Pray about everything I preach to you in these videos. <clears throat> Don't just take what I say as gospel truth and whatever else and have to do it because Brother Brian said so. No. The scriptures are your authority, not me. So we'll see you in the next video.